Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, I wanted to tackle a constraint that had given me some trouble for a while. That's the child of constraint. In general, it seems pretty straightforward, but once you start using it, it has some quirks that I wanted to work out. So I put together this video to hopefully demystify it for you just a little bit. To keep this simple, we're just gonna create two objects. The first one's gonna be a cube, and that's gonna be our parent. The next one will be a sphere, and this will be our child. We're going to want our cube to move across. As soon as it reaches underneath the sphere, it's going to connect to it. Drag it along with it, release it about here, and then the cube will continue onward. So first, let's go ahead and insert keyframes for the movement of our parent. I'll press the I key and insert the location. I'm going to jump ahead 100 frames and move my cube over. Then I'll insert a second keyframe. There. Next, we want to create a child of constraint on our icosphere. We'll do that under the constraints menu and add a child of constraint. Using the target eyedropper, I'll choose the cube. If I play the animation now, you'll see that the icosphere moves exactly in sync with the cube. However, I don't want the icosphere to start moving until the cube is underneath it. So what I want to do here is go ahead and change the influence of this constraint to zero, and then set a keyframe. Now, while my cube moves, my sphere won't. It's at this point that I want the cube to start affecting the sphere. So, I'm going to set a new keyframe here at a value of 1. You'll see when I did this that the sphere moved over away from the cube as if the influence had been one the whole time. We can fix this by using the set inverse button. What this does is creates a new relationship between the sphere and the cube based on where the sphere is keyframed. When we click this, you see the sphere jumps back to where it was, and now this is the new starting point of its relationship to the cube. If I scrub backwards, you see we get some weirdness. The reason for this is if you watch the influence as I scrub through this, you'll see the influence goes from 0 to 1. And we don't want that. We want the influence to be 0 up until the frame before it becomes 1. So I'm going to back up one frame, and on that frame, set the influence to 0. You'll notice now down here in the dope sheet that the influence for the child of constraint has a solid bar from frame 1 to frame 28. That means there's two keyframes, one at either end, but the value doesn't change. Then at frame 29, the value becomes 1. And then as we scrub forward, we see that our sphere is moving along with our cube. It's at this point we want the cube to drop the sphere and to no longer drag it along. The first thing you might think is to go ahead and set a new keyframe at 1 for the influence, move ahead a frame, and set it to 0. But as you can see, the sphere jumps back to its original position, because that's the only location that the sphere has been placed at. So we're going to have to make some adjustments to the sphere itself. Jumping back to the first frame, I'm going to go ahead and set a location keyframe for the sphere. Now I'll scrub forward, and it's at this frame, frame 61, that our sphere needs a new keyframe. The question is, what is the keyframe that it needs? Well, if we jump back one frame, we see this is where we want the sphere to stop moving. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a keyframe. Now, if I insert a location keyframe, you'll see that all of the channels, X, Y, and Z, all have solid bars on them. And if I move forward a frame, the sphere jumps back to where it was. This is because Blender still thinks that that sphere is located at that previous point, even though it's being affected by the constraint. So adding a new location keyframe doesn't actually change its location. It just reinserts the same value. So the question is, how can I get this location put into a new keyframe? This is where a keyframe option that you may have seen, but not known what it does, comes in handy. If I go to the I menu, you'll see that we have a set of keyframes 
that start with the word visual. This means the evaluated position currently of that object. So if I insert the visual location of this object, you'll see that the Y and Z locations stay the same, but the X has changed. That means this is keyframed at this point. But now if we move backwards in our timeline, we'll see that our location is really messed up. If we scrub backwards in our timeline, things just got squirrely again. What we have to do here is similar to what we did with the influence. We want the original location of right here to be the same until the frame before it changes to its new location. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna insert my regular location keyframe. This just duplicates the original location of my object, which is back here. But because my influence has been one, it's been moved over. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my influence keyframes and move them ahead one frame. I'll move forward to that next frame and insert my visual location. And then finally move my influence keyframes back. If I play this now, I get the effect that I'm looking for. So let's review what's happening here. We start off with zero influence, with our two objects keyframed at their original positions. At this keyframe, we simply reiterate that the influence is zero on the constraint. At the next keyframe, we change that influence to one, and our cube starts dragging our sphere. At this frame, we reiterate that the influence is still 1, so that it remains constant across these frames, and also we reiterate the location of our sphere being still the original location, so that all through this time, the original location is what's been affected by the influence of the child of constraint. So in this frame, we add a new location of our sphere, which is the location it would be at at the end of our constraint and we shut off our constraint. If we take a look at this scene, we see the exact same thing happening. Except this time, the cube is parented to a path, and instead of just inserting a location keyframe and a visual location keyframe, I've also inserted a rotation keyframe and a visual rotation keyframe. There's also a handy way to do this in that you can insert location and rotation and visual location and rotation at the same time. This whole process is going to come in really handy in a future video where we look at the ability of a claw arm to be able to pick up an object, move it, and set it down somewhere else, but have a nice connection between the arm and the object. I hope this explanation has helped to demystify the child of constraint just a little bit. It's kind of tricky, but I hope it makes a little more sense now. So as always, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome, and until next time, I'll catch you later.